Did you see what John Mayer posted on his Instagram? How do you feel about the lyric change on Better Than Revenge? Being completely gagged by Horny Taylor and I Can See You. Who is When Emma Falls In Love About? Is it Selena? I've been seeing a rumor that John Mayer played the guitar on Dear John, Taylor's version. Is this true? Does Taylor Swift have a crush on Emma Stone? What's up guys? Welcome to Juicy Questions with Juicy Dumplings with Lauren. I came up with this five seconds ago because I ordered dim sum and I wanted to do a juicy Q&A with y'all. And my hands hurt so much from editing. I'm like in seething pain and I'm thankfully I'm at the tail end of that work. But I was like, you know, the setup is here. I've got my dim sum. You've got your juicy cues. Let's answer them. I might eat some of this off camera because I don't want to be that girl, but first of all, this is the best dim sum place in LA. Mm-hmm, I said it, I said what I said. Mm. Oh my God, so good. And would you look at that? I finished all of the dim sum and now it's a week later. Haha, <laughs> welcome back guys. I still got my filming set up down here, so I was like, I gotta do another video. Um, yeah, juicy cues. I don't know, came to me while I was eating dumplings. Thank you to everybody who submitted your juicy cues. To anyone that submitted it on my Instagram story, I will keep you anonymous. And to anyone that submitted it on my Twitter, you won't be because your username will be in it. Let's get started. I'm so excited to be back. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok and threads, I guess. <laughs> You guys have some great questions, really. I was very, very impressed. Juicy Q number one. Um, I did also group some of your guys' cues because some of them were the exact same. First question from Instagram, so it's anonymous. Are you happy she released it when you were home with good service? Yes, yes I am. In case you aren't familiar with me, Taylor Swift like has access to my Google calendar or something. Guess what time Midnight's came out? Midnight's was dropped on me and my boyfriend's two year anniversary. Anytime she drops something exciting, I'm usually out of town or I'm at a friend's wedding. It's wild. So yes, I was very happy that she released it when I was home, when I was available. So I could like join it. Me and Matt call it like, this is like my Super Bowl when Taylor Swift drops an album. It's fun. It's good times. So Scarlet, it was Maroon on Twitter says, what is your dream Taylor collab? Guys, there are so many. Like we have technically gotten a Katy Perry one in the music video. That might be all we get from there. But like Taylor Swift, Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, Beyonce. I, I also think it would be amazing. I don't know to like for her and John Mayer to do something. I don't know. I mean, if Taylor Swift is parading around Taylor Lautner, her ex-boyfriend, What's to say she just doesn't continue down the list? Why hasn't she done anything with Selena Gomez? Why hasn't, like I, she's done stuff with the Hyam sisters. Why not Selena Gomez? She's also a singer. It would be cool if Taylor did something with like Miley Cyrus. And then there's also, because she's on this like emo punk string right now of what? Panic at the Disco was obviously amazing. Brendan Urie and moving on to Fall Out Boy, Electric Touch, we love. Does anyone remember this band, Cute Is What We Aim For? Just me, because that would be amazing. I love them. Also, what was that other band from the 90s? Rooney? Rooney. Ooh, a Taylor Swift and Rooney collab. It, that wasn't the 90s, it was the early 2000s. I just call everything from the 90s. I was born in 91, but I was nine in the 90s, so I didn't really experience culture and music, you know? This was submitted to me on Instagram anonymously. Did you see what John Mayer posted on his Instagram? No. You guys, I opened John Mayer's Instagram and I was like, wait, what, what do you mean did he post on Instagram? My eye immediately goes to the purple picture. I'm positive this is not about Taylor. Oh, Folsom Field in Boulder, you guys, I went to college there. Okay, that was amazing. Doesn't get better than three nights at Folsom Field in Boulder with Dead and Company. Oh. The afterglow is still shining bright. Is that what they're talking about? I just Googled in case that was like a lyric to a Dave Matthews band thing or John Mayer. No, I don't think that that's, no. I mean, I, this is a great question actually, because it's like, okay, okay. If I was John Mayer's publicist and you are fully freaking aware of when Taylor Swift's Dear John Taylor's version drops, it'd be great for your social media analytics and engagement to play into it, but to not mention it, right? And the fact that Taylor went out on stage and said this. So I was hoping to ask you that as we lead up to this album coming out, I would love for that kindness and that gentleness to, ex to extend onto our internet activities. Right? So what I'm trying to say is, I'm putting this, I'm putting this album out because I want to own 
my music, and I believe that cool, bully John Mayer. the desire to own their music should be able to. That's why I'm putting out this album. I'm 33 years old. I don't care about anything that happened to me when I was 19, except the songs I wrote and the one who was So what I'm trying to tell you is that I'm not putting this album out so that you can go and like should feel the need to defend me on the internet against someone you think I might have written a song about. Uh, John Mayer. Telling us clearly she does not care about what happened to her when she was 19 years old, a million years ago. Like, please don't attack anybody online. So in my mind, like, okay, imagine if you're Taylor Swift right now, today, that'd be pretty sweet. You're like, okay, how do we release this song? I think my team, Tree, should reach out to John Mayer's team just to olive branch, release the doves, there's peace between us. I'm gonna be re-recording this song and there might be some influx of Swifties in your mentions, but we're cool, we're cool, we're cool, right? Do you think that that happened? I think there would be. Oh God, there are 30,000 comments. <laughs> you guys, stop. Oh my God, Fiona Walker 45. Funny your cover is purple. You're shunned from that color. Speak never, John. <laughs> Mom told us to be quiet. Too bad she released an album called Speak Now. Wait, okay. I don't condone in online bullying. Y'all, stop being rude to him. I can't like every comment. Now go stand in the corner and think about what you did, you guys. Stop doing this, it's hilarious. I didn't know that that existed, so thank you for bringing that to my attention. I think that it could, it, it, it'd be hard not to want to play into this. You know, you saw Taylor Lautner's TikTok, the Pray for John. Also, did you find out, did you recently see that Taylor Lautner said that his name is actually pronounced Taylor Lautner? Taylor Lautner. And someone was like, why don't you correct anyone, all of Hollywood? And he's like, I don't want to correct anyone, that's awkward. You will always be Taylor Lautner to me slash Team Jacob. All the way. All the way. All right, the big one, one of the big ones. Everyone wants to know, new lyric and better than revenge. Why do you think that lyric change was necessary? Not here for the changes and better than revenge, not at all. Why the lyric change? The first line was much juicier. How do you feel about the lyric change on better than revenge? You guys. So what's funny is before the album even came out, this was kind of all over Twitter. I guess that means that it must have leaked because there were infographics of like Taylor Swift changed the lyrics. What do you think of the lyric change? I'm gonna start with reading the things that I tweeted because I, I talked about this. I said, TBH, I'm shook at the Swifty outrage regarding lyric change to her own music. Taylor told us in the past, she's literally mentioned this to us, she feels guilty about certain slut shamey lyrics that she's written because she herself has been the victim of it. In my opinion, this shows immense growth as a person, as a creative, and it's still an amazingly witty line. Moths to the flame, that's brilliant. That's very, very smart. Someone responded to me and said, I understand it disappointed though, just a purist wanted the re-records to be just like the originals. This is something that I'm hearing a lot of. And this is also something that I really thought it was going to be. Like if movies wanna buy Dear John and they wanna have it sound like the raw Taylor Swift young heartbroken version, they now can. So to that I responded, I totally feel this. Those lyrics meant a lot to us in 2010 and now, and I get it, but I feel that Taylor wanting to own her work today in 2023 and be proud of it, that allows her the autonomy for lyric changes, especially if that means another woman won't be attacked online for 10 year old drama. I think we even like found out that the girl Camille, it wasn't even like true. So. There's so many reasons why I do think that the lyric change is fine. Also, to continue on my tweet responses, Lauren Taylor's version said, people are freaking out and it's not that deep. I like the new line. If they don't, they can sing the other one over it. Lauren, I like you. I was like, exactly, we all know what the line really is. If this makes Taylor's life easier so she can post the re-records without dredging up teen drama from a million years ago, let her let her do what she wants. Sing the lyric as it was originally written. Like, I don't see the problem. That's, that's honestly how I feel about that. And I guess a lot of what I'm seeing online is like outrage. They're like, how could she do this? This is so ridiculous. She's, she's subjecting to woke culture. And it's like, guys, it's her music. She wants to own it. Let her, let her do it. Like, I don't understand the, I don't see the problem. It's three seconds of a whole freaking song. <laughs> Sing the original version. If anything, I feel like it's like a fun Easter egg for us and for like real Swifties because we know the real line. Get over it. <laughs> 
That's my best advice to you. All right, let's talk about I Can See You because there's a lot of things that made me laugh in my DMs when you guys asked me these things. I can see you like, excuse me, Miss Taylor, Chili Pepper, being completely gagged by Horny Taylor and I can see you. Yeah, I know, that was a little wild. First time that we heard it, huh? But who do you think I can see you is about? Why do you think I can see you didn't make it to the album? Andrea, Big Machine, Scott, and then Sam from Twitter says, I want your feelings on I can see you because it's on the sexier side and we didn't have any song like that from her besides Spark Now, or, Wow. Spark now, that's what just came out of my mouth. Can you tell it's 10 p.m. at night? Because it's on the sexier side and we didn't have any songs like that from her besides sparks fly kind of at the same time. Um, what I love so much about I Can See You is that, yeah, this is young, horny Taylor. <laughs> Like talking about your jacket on the ground. And it's a good question of who is it about? It could literally be about anyone. The fact that she was saying, if you only knew, makes me think it could be like about her high school crush down the hallway. Like that's what kind of gives me some like high school -y vibes. But again, we all have heard about how Taylor's songwriting like works. Sometimes she'll think of a lyric and like will write it down and won't use it for years. So we don't know how in the vault and how complete and finished these songs were. I would love to like hear more about it, honestly. Did Scott B do Taylor Dirty by cutting I Can See You because it's too sexy? It had number one potential. I really loved I Can See You. Seriously, it was very sexy, it was very spicy. I do honestly think that Big Machine and her mom and dad were probably like, no, we don't want this on the album. I like also wonder if Taylor, a part of her was like, you know, I don't really wanna submit that. Like, you know, she has a say in what goes on the vault and what doesn't. It's a good question though. It's pretty sexy. Sparks fly, like, yes. I think I need your guys' opinion on this one. I don't think it could be about John Mayer. I mean, some of you guys think it is, but I don't, I don't know. Is when Emma falls in love about Emma Stone. Who is when Emma falls in love about? Is it Selena? Thoughts? Does Taylor Swift have a crush on Emma Stone? Guys, I'm just gonna put up this tweet here where Taylor's asking people to stop thinking that she has crushes on her friends. She's never given us any indication that she's into women. She's never not given us, I, I, it's so hard for me to even, I'm not entering that rabbit hole. No, my answer to that is no. I do not think that Taylor Swift, but that's, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not, okay. Let's go back. Is when Emma falls in love about Emma Stone or could it be about Selena? So we did see that Taylor said that this is a song about my friend. However, doesn't mean that she can't just swap the name out. Emma versus Selena versus, I don't know, it's, I, it's funny you ask that about Selena because I actually do think, I, I thought of Selena first. Like, when Emma falls in love, she calls up her mom, jokes about the ways that this one could go wrong. It could be about anyone. She definitely knows Selena's sense of humor. Like, they're super, super close. And just maybe if Selena's like, oh, it's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. I met this guy. Like, I, I can't let myself get too excited, which honestly, I feel like, that's the kind of dater that I was when I was single. I was just like, oh my God, like if I like someone, like I have to just like kind of calm down because I like people too much. <laughs> like to tell you the truth, sometimes I wish I was her. I did see some people pull out some YouTube video of Taylor Swift on an interview saying that they wishes that, she wishes that she could be like her friend Emma Stone. So she could, maybe. You'd think that like Emma Stone would come out and like say something about it if it was though, just to be like, I love this song. Has she? I don't think she has yet, right? She won't lose herself in love the way I, that I did. Wait, what? Lose yourself? Lose me to love me. <gasps> She has a song called that. Ooh, Lose You To Love Me. I did a reaction to that song, actually. That's actually one of my most watched videos on my channel, fun fact. Now I think it's about Selena even more. Emma met a boy with eyes like a man. Turns out her heart, oh, I love that line. Turns out her heart fits right in the palm of his hands. I mean, like, if this is speak now, it could be like she wrote it about Selena when Selena fell in love with Justin or with um, the weekend. Who else was her big um, loves? Now I really think it's about Selena, to be honest with you. Here's the thing. Taylor has asked us to not like try and sit here and figure out who all of her songs are about. It could be about Emma Stone. It could also just be like about the strong women in her life. It, it could be a bunch of different people in different relationships just meshed together for a really good song. What does this article say? It's more of an ode to female friendship. 
than us needing to figure it out, but I don't know. I've been seeing a rumor that John Mayer played the guitar on Dear John, Taylor's version. Is this true? That would be sick, but no, I don't think so. That would be really cool. Could you answer for me if you think she would re-release Wonderstruck? Because that's all I've been thinking about. Dude, that would be amazing if she did a resurgence of her perfume. I would buy it. Even though there's all these things in the internet and the interwebs, health interwebs right now about fragrance and how the US like doesn't ban anything in their fragrance, but the EU does and it's just super unsafe. Anyone else know any about that stuff? That would be cool. I've had a few people be like, it would be so great if Wonderstruck came back. Her, her perfume. Um, Nicole in my DM said, this might be a dumb question question, but how do you feel about the album overall re-recorded? I feel like it's giving me a minute to get used to it, if that makes sense. I do like it, don't get me wrong, but some of the production is different. And while I'm happy that Taylor isn't sad anymore, I miss the emotions with songs like Last Kiss, Dear John. Takes me a minute to get used to change. Yes, Nicole, I actually know exactly what you're talking about. A bunch of you asked me questions about Dear John, so I'm gonna kind of merge your questions into one big answer. Um, next one is from a Twitter from BB Girl, and I'm probably gonna have to blur out your username because I don't wanna get demonetized. BB Girl said, do you feel like her heart was in this? It sounded like she sang it emotionlessly. I appreciate whatever she gives us, but this sounded very detached. What do you think? It's a really good question. You're not the only one talking about this on the internet in case you can't tell. It's just, it's like a lot of you, I'm gonna get into that a little bit um, in another question. You guys uh, want my thoughts on Dear John. And it's like, I do think that her heart was in it. I do. When I hear Long Live, oh my God. I love the production of Enchanted. There's like a lot of mixed reviews out there. I I do feel like her heart was in this, if that's what you're asking me, but it's impossible to ask a 32 year old to sing with the same raw emotion as a 20 year old heartbroken teenager. I'll get into Dear John in a little bit later on these questions, but I do think that her heart was in this, but you're not the only one, BB girl, to think that she sounded emotionless, that she didn't sound as raw. I feel like if anything, this was like her, I feel like, this was her way of taking back her music, her diary, her art, her words, her feelings that somebody else owned and she was never offered it to buy. So it's like, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Um, the Swifty Cat on Twitter said, what do you think about the interpretation of Taylor of her past work? Do you think she matched the same emotions? Is that achievable from a realistic point of view? Will you listen to your old CDs every once in a while or you think you won't miss baby Taylor's voice? So like, it's very interesting that you say this. Um, I honestly, like, I enjoyed the song, Dear John, that I didn't really even think about it in that way. And then I did go back and listen to the originals on my CD and I wrote out like little notes as I was listening to it. And I wanna read you the, the thoughts. So when I was re-listening to Dear John, the thoughts that I wrote down were, you know, I actually do see what you mean about the difference in Dear John. In the original, as soon as she starts singing, long were the nights, like, in the original, she, as soon as she starts singing the first notes, the immediate emotion that I feel from her is longing and sadness and a lot of pain. There's so much hurt in her voice because it was fresh and really, really raw. She was also 19 or 20 when she recorded this. Her voice was a little fresher, more unstable, and her vocal cords hadn't fully matured yet. So yes, it does sound different. And no, I do not think it's realistic. I don't think that's realistically achievable for a 30 year old Taylor to sound like her immature, not, not immature, but you know what I mean? Vocal cords, young, you're just not able to do that. When she says, wondering which version of you I would get on the phone. I wrote down that that line in particular, sorry for the singing, is like scathing. I wrote scathing before reading that prologue, by the way, that was funny. All right, so I actually haven't read this prologue yet. Prologue, prologue. So I would like to read it with you guys now. I can't start this video until I know what the prologue says. It's a long one, so I'm gonna read it to you guys like we're, like it's a little bedtime story. Hi friends, while I was filming this video, I spur of the moment decided to make this dramatic live reading of the Speak Now Taylor's version prologue, a Patreon exclusive, so click the link down below if you want to watch that. Here's just a funny sped up version of me doing it for YouTube and enjoy the rest of this video. Okay, that was a great little dramatic reading of that. I truly, truly love that. I'm gonna make that a Patreon only. <laughs> Hi, Patreon people, you get to watch that. Ooh, I love that a lot. 
That was great. Oh my God, the fact that she said that about Dear John, also last kiss, mm, I'm a last kiss stan, I have to say. Wow, I don't think I've ever said stan out loud. It felt very, just as weird as writing it. <laughs> when, when in the original, it's like, it's, it's, it is, it's scathing, it's like sharp, and you can for sure hear that in her voice in the original. I agree with you, there is a difference. I do actually think that she might have tried to do less emotion for this one to avoid John getting the hate and avoid the tabloids trying to start something. Like, imagine this headline. Is Taylor Swift still mad about John Mayer breakup 13 years later? Or something like that. Sounds like she's trying to minimize it, you know, because TMZ is TMZ. And then I wrote, I do also have to say though, she sounds like a young child in the original because she is. It's like baby Taylor voice that had like a squeaky, more green sound and it just hasn't fully matured yet. And it's like, th that song will always be that song. And you know as much as you can try to re-record and sound exactly like it without auto-tune without machines and post You wouldn't be able to do that And then I ended it with I feel like it's not realistic or fair to ask Taylor to imitate her old heartbroken 20 year old self That's how I feel about all of that um, I do also just want to like I feel like social media has gotten a little crazy. It's made Something, I mean, social media is what like made the word fandom and then there's like fandom fights and just, it's gotten a little crazy. Can we just all remember we're here for the music? Like if you go back and listen to the old Taylor versions, as long as you are fully aware that she doesn't own it and all the drama that's gone by, I just don't, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to like what you like. Sorry, I said it. I love Taylor, I love Taylor's version. And I don't think you should beat yourself up if you're liking some of the old versions too. That doesn't make you a bad person, a bad fan. Swifty Twitter and TikTok need to just relax, okay? Like positivity. I don't even know how to like, you know, yeah. Taylor still makes money when you listen to her old versions, all right? Taylor still makes money. So just, you're fine. You can go to sleep at night without feeling bad about yourself. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Stefan Labossiere said, did you spot the difference in the production between Aaron and Jack? They each worked on three tracks. I was shocked that Aaron produced Electric Touch. I did not know that. Hold on, please. Aaron Dessner helped produce Electric Touch, featuring Fall Out Boy, When Emma Falls in Love, and Foolish One. I did not know that. Those are such good ones, ugh. Thank you for that little fun fact. Steven, Stefan, I really appreciate it. Someone asked, what is your favorite vault track? You guys, I really think these are some of the best vault tracks we've ever gotten, ever, truly. I really, really do. Um, that and Message in a Bottle, which I just freaking love. Favorites out of Electric Touch, When Emma Falls in Love, I Can See You, Castles Crumbling, Foolish One, and Timeless. You guys, uh, okay, it changes every day. I'm gonna answer the question of which one's my favorite. Today, it's Timeless. I've been listening to it so much, it's so good. But honestly, yesterday, it was I Can See You. So if I had to rank them, right now, let's do Timeless is number one, Foolish One is number two. This sucks, I love them all. All right, I'm just gonna say them. Electric Touch, When Emma Falls In Love, Castle's Crumbling is the bottom. I hope that that was all six of them. Ooh, that was tough. What's your ranking? Let me know in the comments. Are the vault tracks written from when Speak Now was written or are any actually new new? It's a good question and we don't know the answer. She's told us that these are songs from the vault from this time, this era, but like I mentioned earlier, maybe they weren't totally completed songs. We know she has like a, an iPhone note God, could you imagine just like looking through Taylor Swift's like iPhone notes, like the things she writes herself? Maybe there was like a song that was incomplete and she pulled lyrics from the past at that time. Maybe, you know, having her friends, uh, Aaron and Jack Antonoff help her produce these. Maybe they had some, I don't know. This is very, very great questions. I know that Speak Now is all written by her, but I don't know. That's a great question. What are your thoughts, guys? Do you think the foolish one is about John Mayer or Joe Jonas or even somebody else? Well, first of all, Foolish One is about herself. She's calling herself the Foolish One. Could it be about John Mayer? I mean, when she says, my cards are on the table, yours are in your hand. That's her being like, I've told you I love you. It's out there. You know my cards. I've showed you my hand. You haven't shown me yours. Yours are in your hand. You are keeping your feelings to yourself. Um, you give me just enough attention to keep my hopes too high. That could be John Mayer, actually. Wishful thoughts forget to mention when something's really not right. Was it the fact that he was like, how much older than her? I don't, yeah, just, oh, it could be. Checking your mailbox for confessions of love. Is it an AIM mailbox? Is it an 
AOL, <laughs> email. Don't know what to call this situation. And it's delicate. Oh. I mean, for her to say, and maybe someday when we're older, this is something we'll laugh about when she's older because he already is older. Cause you've got her on your arm and me in the wings. It could be John Mayer. I don't know. What do you think guys? Is Castle's crumbling about if her career was over after the VMA incident? Um, in case you guys don't remember, when Taylor talked about the whole, Taylor, I'm gonna let you finish Kanye grabbing the mic situation, she heard from where she was, um, people booing. She heard people booing Kanye West, but in this moment, she was so confused, she thought that they were booing her. And she was just like, oh my God, like, what did I do? Like, I don't understand, like, I was, be literally being awarded. Like there's no higher castle than being awarded at such a young age to be like crumbling down for this horrible thing to happen. And she was like, you know, I really thought like I had done something wrong and like everyone was just booing. And like, imagine just standing on a stage, seeing your idols, your idols, oh my God, booing in your direction. It wasn't at Taylor, but you know, she's going through this like out of body experience in the moment of being on stage and being so young. I don't know. Now they're screaming at the palace front gates. They used to chant my name. Watched all my bridges burn to the ground. Good questions, guys. I wanna know all of your thoughts to these juicy cues. I think it's just fun to say juicy cue. <laughs> It's super freaking late. I'm gonna end it on this last question and I still have to do my nails, oh my God. Um, Zachary Baylog on Twitter says, what surprised you about the album the most? I think what surprised me about the album was how, how much I love these vault tracks as well as I, it, it does surprise me that, it doesn't surprise me, but it's like, I kind of wish that the shaky breath was still in Last Kiss. like. We know that Taylor Swift loves her theatrics. We know that she can do it. I just wonder, you know, that is a creative choice that she made. It was a creative choice to sing Dear John with less emotion, to sing Last Kiss without the shaky breath. I feel like I can still hear some longing in her voice at Last Kiss. We know she's very, very talented actress, voice actress, singer, all of these things. And so I think it did surprise me that she didn't, I don't know. Dear John, it has some emotion in it, but I think if you guys are looking for the, the kind of feeling you can't fake, that true heartbroken, like you are singing a note about a song and like you're gonna like choke into tears because you're, it's so emotional and so fresh. I don't think it, you can get that, you know? I feel like we have to get songs like Maroon. Oh, so good. I'm still not over Midnight's. I still have to do a Midnight's Revisited video now that her and Joe Alwyn aren't together. Isn't that crazy? That's still crazy to me. I'm like not, I'm not over it, but I'm happy for her, but I'm like, but also what if she, what if he was the reason that she was like locked up in a castle for six years? No, I'm, I'm literally just speculating right now. I just have to tell you, it was so exciting to see her post about 4th of July. Like that is so six, seven, eight years ago of her. Like I loved that. Like I, I wanna see more of her interacting with her fans, but dude, she's just so freaking famous and big right now. Like the demand is insane. I just miss when she would like tweet. She would tweet random things. It was all the time. We were talking about this on my Patreon the other day. Like she would literally just like tweet things about cereal in the morning. Like these, like she wouldn't run her tweets by her publicist. She would have typos. She'd be talking about cereal and boys and just funny little things. That was a good time on social media. Oh, back in her MySpace days, the MySpace movies. That was so fun. All right, guys. I think I answered a good chunk. I would love to do more juicy cues if this is something that you guys enjoyed. I actually enjoyed um, doing this because this was more laid back, no real script. Kind of like a live stream, but an edited live stream just for y'all. I wanna know all of your thoughts on all the questions that I asked, so please let me know your thoughts down below. And make sure you're following me on Instagram and on TikTok. I'm really trying to post more on TikTok and just kind of more my honest thoughts. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are doing great. Thanks for being here. Thanks for liking my videos and sharing and commenting. And I wanna, I wanna do more of this. I want you to do more of this and bring you a little mix of my travel stuff and my Taylor stuff and pop culture. <sighs> All of this Colleen Ballinger situation makes me so freaking sad, you guys, but I just don't think I, c I don't know if I can make a video on it. It's really weird. It's really weird and it's sad and there's all these things that like I was talking about on Instagram today because it's it's upsetting for so many reasons. All right, I gotta end this video. I'm now ranting. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave it a like, make sure you comment and share it with a Swifty friend. You, I've gotta tell the YouTube algorithm that I'm back. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. Hello. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.